my four-year-old was enrolled at Punanaleo Okamako, I was picking her up from school one day. And as a career mom, I'm rushing off to the next meeting. And I was walking, and I was holding her hand. And we were walking up a paved pathway. And I was looking at her saying, Avivi, baby, we got to go. And she started pulling back at my arm. So I turned around. I looked at her. And she had lost her kalipa about four feet away. At that moment, a teenage girl in a blue uniform and a bag and her books walked up, grabbed her kalipa, walked over, walked over to her, and said, Eya tita, ko kalipa. Smiled at her and walked away. That moment sealed my commitment and my fate to Hawaiian-focused education. Because for me, as a makua, there was no other place that I could get and experience the kind of care and aloha that I did at that very moment. She didn't know who we were. I never met this teenager. I later found out she, was, she graduated from Kamako that year. In the months to come, I had enrolled Waiale Ale at Kamako and spent the next five years as the school's director. Today, I am privileged to be the director of Ho'olako Like at the Kamehameha Schools that supports over 17 of these Hawaiian-focused schools. These schools are thriving. We've seen an increase, uh, quadrupled in, in enrollment in the past 10 years. We've seen more and more community members striving to open their own schools in their own communities. And part of my role is helping our Native Hawaiian communities open more of these schools and to help the ones that are open to become stronger and better to serve more Hawaiians. So what does that mean? Well, I can tell you that there are many researchers out there that we all know and love that can give you all the research that you want to hear, but this is not what I'm going to do to, for you today. A few years into my time at Kamako, I was asked to be on a panel. And it was to discuss what you would call success for a Native Hawaiian child in a Hawaiian school. And the purpose was to share this with faculty and staff of a school that was considering becoming a Hawaiian school. What I got for that presentation was a plant, and it was a pohina hina. So I took that home in a beautiful vase, and my then six-year-old daughter says to me, Mama, what do you use it for? What is its value? And I said to her, well, isn't it beautiful with its silver leaves and purple flowers? We're going to plant it in our yard with the rest of our plants. And she says, for what? What am I supposed to do with this plant? What is it good for? From that three-minute conversation with my daughter, what I realized was she had a connection to our aina, to her people, and to her surroundings more than I could imagine in just two years that she had been at Kamako. But more importantly, what she just did was demonstrate Hawaiian education. She took what she had learned in school and she applied it in her everyday life. Today, we call that transformational. That's amazing that education does that, right? <laughs> Our kupuna have been doing it all these years. That's the way we've learned. That's the way we live. And yet this is the way that our nation is saying we're moving in terms of education. That common core standards are, are, the, are the thing that's going to help us become who we already are. So when I look at these Hawaiian-focused schools, I see what we already know. And I see what we already live and what our kupuna have already been living. And now we've all, all of a sudden become uh, 
our, our way of education has become innovative and that the rest of the nation is moving towards that. And to me, I say, it's about time because we already were doing what our kupuna taught us to do. I want to share with you this last story, and it's not my own, but it's an important story. One of my colleagues shared this with me. And on a Hawaiian-focused charter school, it is very, very rare to have a fight, very rare. Because schools are so close, because they are, students and families are treated like ohana, there's very little uh, discipline that happens. And that's wonderful. But I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it happens. So one day, these two boys, uh, during recess, during Vapani, started arguing. And that eventually led to a physical fight. As you can imagine, to the surprise of the kumu and the surprise of the students, these boys were actually fighting. So students started running towards the fight. Kumu started running towards the fight. And one student, a female, walked right up to the fight, looked at them and said, Kenana ne na pepe. The fight ended immediately. By the, her actions and her words, the fight ended immediately. So I ask you, on what campus in our public schools would you ever see that kind of understanding and care that these students shared? I tell this story because it is what, when you hear this story, you understand. You understand exactly what Hawaiian-focused education is, and you understand exactly what it means. These two boys understood that their actions and behaviors that they just did was inappropriate and was wrong. And they took it upon themselves to self-correct. They took it upon themselves to apologize to those babies for their actions by simply the courage of one girl walking up to that fight and saying, the babies are watching. Now, I know many of you want data. You want statistics. You want to compare group, right? That's what we all supposed to do in order to say it works or it doesn't. So as one of my roles at Kamehameha schools, of course, we do all of those things. So I can tell you now that we've been tracking many of these students for the past five or plus years. We still have a long way to go. But I can tell you what the data says. Students attending these schools have a very high attendance rate, higher than our public school system. They love being at these schools. They love seeing and being a part of what they get every day in these schools. Parents are very satisfied, more satisfied than our public school systems. They, and if you are a Kayapuni Ohana as I am, you know how much time and effort we put into parent participation, and that is higher than average. And of course, we see academic gains for our students. We see growth over time. I'm not telling you that our schools are perfect, but I am telling you what they've accomplished in the past 10 years with our students that our public school system has not been able to accomplish in the past 100 years with our students. And so what I tell you today is that we have a long way to go, that yes, we're not perfect, but we can see promise in all of our schools and we can see hope in the things that they're doing and I can only expect them to grow. So I leave you with this. Heaha ko kalipa. So what is that moment in your life? What is that thing that really gave you, without a doubt, 
your deep understanding of what is right about Hawaiian education. And I ask you to think about sharing that kalipa, that mo'olelo, with others so that as we move forward in our journey to self-determination, the more and more people we will have to join our path.